Um, I kind of got, <laughs> right as I hit go live, um, <laughs> my dad and my stepmom called, so I just got off the phone with them. But, um, I'm going through my stuff, and I ran into my book on uh, developmental embryology, and it's something I've been thinking about a lot lately and how this relates to the models of cosmology, um, especially like the Kabbali Kabbalistic uh, models uh, with like Sheol um, and the like pillars and all that. Um, so I'm just going to read this section here. And it has to do with uh, chicken embryos and um, gravity, which I think is kind of interesting since now kind of the um, the kind of common uh, thought now is that gravity doesn't exist or gravity is a hoax. Like you know, gravity is related to the apple, like Sir Isaac Newton and the apple is poison, like, you know, Snow White eats the apple, and Eve eats the apple, um, the apple proves gravity, the apple fell on Sir Isaac Newton's head. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and read this. Um, axis formation in the chick embryo. While the formation of the body axis is accomplished during gastrulation, there is specific specification occurs early during the cleavage stage. The role of pH forming the dorsal ventral axis. The dorsal ventral or back to belly axis is critical to the formation of the hypoblast and to the further development of the embryo. This axis is established when the cleaving cells of the blastoderm establish a barrier between the basic pH 9.5 albumin above the blastodistic and the acidic pH 6.5 subdermal cavity below it. Um, water and sodium ions are transported from the albumin through the cells and into the subdermal cavity, creating a membrane potential difference of 20, 25 microvolts across the epiblast cell layer. So this pH differential between the um, yolk sac and the actual embryo creates a electrical uh, difference. So it's like a battery. Um, it's positive at the ventral side of the cells. The ventral, the ventral side is the side that's the belly and the dorsal side is the side that's the back, like a dorsal fin. This process distinguishes two sides of the epiblast, a side facing the negative and a basic albumin, which becomes the dorsal side, and a side facing the positive and acidic fluid of the subdermal cavity, which becomes the ventral side. So very early in the embryological development, it's differentiated between what becomes the actual baby and what becomes the yolk. Um, so the side that becomes the, the embryo is the ventral side, that's the belly, and it has to do with being positive and acidic. The dorsal side or the back side of this egg becomes the albumin, which is the negative um, and basic. This axis can be reversed experimentally either by reversing the pH gradient or by inverting the potential difference across the cell layer. So if they put an electrical charge across this during the early embryological stages, like Aristotle did these kinds of um, experiments um, because it's easy, to, it's easy to do experiments on a, on a chicken egg uh, because they develop very quickly and you can almost see through the, the shell. Um, but you can put a charge across and change uh, the difference of what becomes the yolk and what becomes the, um, the albumin. The role of gravity in forming, wait. Uh, okay. 
the role of gravity in forming the anterior posterior axis. So I wanted to like say that it's very early on in the developing um, divisions of the embryo that the belly's determined, that the back's determined, that the front's determined, that the like the head and the tail are determined. And these have to do with the electrical charges, which is the same as the pH, the acid or basic. So acidic is positive and basic is negative. Okay, the role of gravity in forming the anterior posterior axis. The conversion of the radially symmetrical blastoderm into a bilaterally symmetrical structure is determined by gravity. So like early, early developing um, embryos like starfishes and stuff, they're symmetrical across a circle. So you can like divide it like a, like a pie. And then as you get more advanced into the vertebrates, you have to be symmetrical across a, a bilateral. So you like you have a mirror reflection. Um, and this is determined by gravity. As the ovum passes through the hen's reproductive tract, it, ro it is rotated for about 20 hours in the shell gland. This spinning at a rate of 10 to 12 revolutions per hour shifts the yolk such that its lighter components lie beneath one side of the blastoderm. This tips up that end of the blastoderm and that end becomes the posterior portion of the embryo, the part where primitive streak formation begins. Okay, so this is what this is showing. So the yolk, the yolk rotates in the shell it looks like it rotates counterclockwise. And that rotation of 10 to 12 revolutions per hour shifts the yolk so that the blastoderm goes to the end, which becomes the posterior end. Okay, specification of the chick anterior posterior axis by gravity. Rotation in the shell gland results in the lighter components of the yolk pushing up one side of the blastoderm. This more elevated region, so it kind of pimples up. This more elevated region becomes the posterior of the embryo. So this has to do with rotation and like gravity. It is not known what interactions cause this portion of the blastoderm to become the posterior marginal zone, or PMZ, and to initiate gratulation. Early on, the ability to initiate a primitive streak is found throughout the marginal zone, and if the blastoderm is separated into parts, each having its own marginal zone, each part will form its own primitive streak. However, once a PMZ has formed, it controls the other regions of the margin. Not only do these PMZ cells initiate gratulation, but they also prevent other regions of the margin from forming their own primitive streaks. It says, earlier in investigators, Waddington 1932, thought that the hypoblast induced the formation of the primitive streak and it provided it with the anterior posterior polarity. However, Connor in 1995 rotated the epiblast with respect to the hypoblast at different stages of chick development and showed that the epiblast initiates primitive streak formation and maintains its polarity independently of the orientation of the hypoblast. So I think that all of this is what like the plane is, what we're sitting on right now, the earth, rotating and um, like here like this is our world and we're on this plane here between the two layers of the um, the epiblast and the hypoblast. This is like, like the what's the the baby and like 
what the baby feeds on. And then we start dividing into consciousnesses. Like these are realities, but they're also consciousnesses. Okay. And these are like, so we get to this super cell stage, right? And then it starts spinning. So all of these consciousnesses were inside of this dome. This is, this is our world right here. And it starts spinning. And eventually it will start um, fold, in, involuting. Like the edge starts folding up. So the spinning and the folding up of the layers, the layers start to fold up and create the, the developing embryo. This is what, so this is the developing embryo right here and it feeds on this. And the way that it kind of pimples off of where it feeds off of is by spinning. And then inside of this, it will start to fold in on itself. And I think that this is kind of what the rapture is. And the people that are going to be going up the, 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 the lining of the dome um, are, are the people that represent these cell structures. Um, and it has to do with charges. Okay, let's keep reading. Recent studies in 2002 suggest that the rotation causes the secondary hypoblast to form in the area and that the secondary hypoblast cells push away the primary hypoblast cells that secrete cerebrus. At the primary hypoblast cells are moved away from the posterior marginal zone, the absence of cerebrus allows nodal protein to become expressed in the PMZ. It now seems apparent that the PMZ contains cells that act as the equivalent of the amphibian nucoop center. When placed in the anterior region of the marginal zone, a graft of posterior marginal zone tissue, posterior to and not including Kohler's sickle, is able to induce a primitive streak in Henson's node without contributing cells to either structure. Like the amphibian nucoop center, this region is thought to be the place where beta catechin localization in the nucleus and a TGF beta family signal coincide. TGF is tumor growth factor. Uh, beta catechin, beta catechin, beta catechin, beta catechin, beta catechin, it's not very beta catechin. Beta catechin is found throughout the marginal zone, but not in the interior cells, while VG1 expression is seen only in the posterior cells of this region. The overlap of these two regions constitutes the posterior marginal zone new coop center. Okay. Okay, formation of the new coop center in frogs and chicks. Okay, so here. Dorsal. So dorsal is uh, the back side, like a dorsal fin. Formation of the new coop center in Xenopus. Gravity and site of sperm entry determine the placement of beta caden in the dorsal region. The vegetal cells secrete VG1. So <laughs> vegetal is like what it feeds on. Um, the overlap becomes the new coop center. In the chick, beta catechin is found in the outer cells of the blaster disc, 
which being furthest from the center and adjacent to the yolk are equivalent to the ventral cells of the frog embryo. The VG1 producing cells are resistant, probably by gravity, to the presumptive posterior cells of the blastoderm. The overlap becomes the new coop center. So this has to do with gravity and then the secretion of the beta cadaen. in. Interesting. So this has to do with spin and gravity and secretions. And I believe this is the same model of where our realm is. I believe this is the spot that's going to start um, invaginating and then this will start building up layers and then you'll start getting your tissue layers of the embryo and then as this embryo develops this part gets smaller and smaller because this is what it's like feeding off of this is the yolk the organizer of the chick embryo forms just anteriorly to the new coop center the epiblast and middle layer cells in the anterior portion of kohler's sickle become henson's node the lateral portions of kohler's sickle contribute to the posterior portion of the primitive streak okay so formation of henson's node from the Kohler's sickle. So Kohler's sickle is this portion right here. This is the yolk which it's feeding off of. The epiblast and hypoblast, these are gonna turn to different tissue types in the embryo. I believe this turns into skin and neural tissue. And I think this turns into like organs. Okay, the formation of Henson's a diagram of the posterior end of an early pre-streak embryo showing the cells labeled with fluorescent dyes in the photographs. They're able to, layer, to, to label these cells because they're in a zone that has only specific um, uh, s s gravity and secretion of um, this beta cata in. Just before gastrulation, that's when it starts to involute, cells in the anterior end of Kohler's sickle, the epiblast and middle layer, were labeled with green dye. Cells at the posterior portion of Kohler's sickle were labeled with red dye. As the cells migrated, the, so they're both here at the same spot, and as the embryo develops, you can see where these two tissue types end up. The cells of the posterior portion of Kohler's sickle were labeled with red dye. As the cells migrated, the anterior cells, which means in the front, formed Henson's node and its notochord derivatives. That's the spinal cord. The posterior cells formed the posterior region of the primitive streak. The time after the dye injection is labeled on each photograph. Okay, this is 30 hours. This is 55 hours. I believe the primitive streak is the brain. And then this is the spinal cord. Um. Henson's node has long been known to be the avian equivalent of the amphibian dorsal blastophere lip. Since it is one, the site where gastrulation begins, to the region whose cells become the cord amosoderm, and three, the region whose cells can organize a second embryonic access when transplanted patients of the gastrula. Gene expression in the chick organizer can be categorized into two sets of genes. The first set contains those genes that are first expressed in the posterior portion of Kohler's sickle and which probably help form the new coop center. These genes, which include VG1 and nodal, then appear throughout the entire length of the primitive streak. Recent studies in 2002 have shown that VG1 plays a crucial role in forming the primitive streak, and if VG1 is 
ectopically expressed in the anterior marginal zone, a secondary axis will form there. I'm just going to read this part. Induction of a new embryo by transplantation of Henson's node. A Henson's node from a duck embryo is transplanted into the epiblast of a chick embryo. A secondary, so there's a duck and they just take that one portion called Henson's node and they put it into a chick. A secondary embryo is induced as is evident by the neural tube from host tissues at the graft site. C. Okay, so here in the chicken, the chicken's still developing, and then they put the duck Henson node inside the chick embryo, and it starts creating its own neural tube alongside the chick. And then C here, graft of Henson's node from one embryo into the periphery of a host embryo. After further incubation, the host embryo has a neural tube whose re regionalization can be seen by in situ hybridization probes to OXT2 red recognize the head region while probes to hoxib one blue recognize the trunk neural tube. The donor node has induced the formation of a secondary axis complete with head and trunk regions. So this is the chicken, the primary Henson's node with the normal neur neural tube that forms. And then they transplanted this, the duck and it creates its own neural tube. So this shows that the differentiation of cells in the Henson's node can be transplanted into another embryo and start developing embryological structures. Now, I don't know, I don't think that this actually turns into a viable duck fetus um but i don't know mm -hmm. yeah but they can do this was only in what 2001 so i think that our world is at kind of this stage here. I believe this is like our, our world. And then um, there's gonna be people that start, like the different people's consciousnesses represent different cell types and cell type uh, um, progenitors. See like, like, like here, these are all the different consciousnesses and we're kind of like at this stage here and we're like layering out. And at some point, this part starts to lip up and we start like we start ascending almost into the middle. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for joining me.